that I verified my driver's license with you so you know who you're speaking with. Right above that office address, you're going to see where it says whereby.com. Um, click on that for me. They're going to click on it. And then I'm going to say, okay, it's going to ask you to put your name in. Nick is the one who taught me this. Sometimes I'll let them put it in, but I normally just say hit continue. Um, I know who you are, just hit continue. Now you're going to hit request permissions. Um, one objection I've seen people get is whereby now will say um, it's going to use your microphone and camera for recording. And a lot of people are like, oh, recording, I don't want to be recorded. And you say, hey, you're not going to be recording anything like that. It's just so you're able to see me. So hit, uh, hit allow after hit request permissions, and then you're going to hit join meeting. And that's it. And, and for all of you as well, like if you are not getting people on video, it's honestly just how, how am I trying to say this? Not getting somebody on video is you're just not even trying. Does that make sense, everybody? Like, there's just no effort because that's a part of the process. Does that make sense, everyone? Like, the same way that that uh, you we used to make dials, the same way we send a text, copy, paste, same thing on every appointment. It's the same conversation with them, right? I mean, I could honestly probably have a recording of myself in the first 10 minutes of a phone call. Um, but then once you get them on video, by the way, if they have an iPhone, um, you can you can have the question right before that. Hey, are you using an iPhone or an Android uh, to look at this email? Are you using an iPhone? Okay, well I can just shoot you over a quick FaceTime, things like that. But that part is extremely simple. We've had that perfected for a while. Um, but again, though, the the best way to practice doing that, just find a buddy or a friend, just send them over the email and walk through it with them. Once you do it, uh, I mean, honestly, after one time doing it, I mean, it's the same thing every single time. Yep. Okay, so we got to getting them on camera. Now, Noel, where do you go from there? So now they're on camera. How do you transition <laughs> next? What do you do next? So you immediately go into rapport, building a little bit of rapport with these people because um, you need to break down that wall. They need to see you as a real person. They need to know that you care about them. Um, that ice needs to be broken. And so Bill Lampy taught me this. So I'm going to credit Bill Lampy with this. Um, but he taught me a way how to automate my rapport, which was a game changer with virtual. Because as all of you guys know, with virtual, a lot of times all you're looking at is like the, the ceiling behind them. You're looking up their nostrils. You, all you can see is the ceiling fan. Like you can't see anything in their house. You don't know if they have a dog. You don't know what's going on. And so... Building rapport was really awkward for me those first few weeks when I was running virtual because I was an in-person agent and I would just look around and, you know, build rapport with what was around me. But how can I build rapport with a nostril? So um, Bill taught me WFWFW. So I just jump right in. So the first W is where? So where, where are you guys originally from? Have you lived in this area a long time or did you move here from somewhere else? You know, ask them where they're from. And then Bill said the, the trick is to ask four questions in each category. So WFWFW asked four questions in each category and then just kind of chat with them for a little bit. And, and remember, you're either an expert in whatever they say or you know literally nothing about it. There's no in between. So don't pretend that you know a whole lot about nothing if you don't, you know, ask questions, be genuinely interested. People love talking about themselves. Um, the second F is family. So what I do is I hold up a little picture of my kids. I bet you guys didn't know this, but I've got five kids and seven pets. Would you guys guess that? No way. Yeah, here's my family, and I go through it. You know, I, I point to each kid, and I tell their name and their age. And then I ask them, what about you guys? Tell me about your family. Any pets, kids, family nearby? What have you got going on? And then they'll tell me. And then the next one is work. And then you ask them four questions about work. And then the next one is fun. So Scott, when you guys aren't working full time and taking care of all that kids and you know that zoo that you have running at your house, what do you do for fun? <laughs> what do you do on your off time? You know. And then the last one is why. So this is right where it transitions from rapport to getting down to business. It's this one little question. It's your transition. It'll make it really smooth and seamless for you guys. So this is where I'm like, you know, Scott, I'm a really chatty person. I could probably talk to you and Kimberly all night long, but I'm sure you guys have something else to get to. So let's see if we can't take care of you real quick with this. Now, when you guys, you know, closed on a loan, you started getting all these forms in the mail for the mortgage protection. Now, Scott, this is the insurance. 
if anything happened to you guys, it pays off that $364,000 loan you have out there. Okay, now most of my clients, they're looking for this protection for a loved one. We want to make sure that if anything happens to them, they're not leaving a huge burden behind for someone else to take care of by themselves. Now, tell me what you were looking for. Why were you concerned with protecting the loan? And Nick always says, tee it up. I'm teeing it up. You know, you can, you don't have to just ask them, okay, why'd you fill this form out? You can set it up. I set it up real nice. Now, this is what this does. This pays off the mortgage. Most people are looking for this for a loved one. They want to make sure they're taking care of their family. Why were you looking for this? And every single time they're like, well, oh, exactly what you just said. I want to make sure my wife and my kids are taken care of. I want to make sure that I don't leave my brother or sister with the mortgage. I want to make sure, you know, um, and that really sets it up nicely. So you set the tone, you're transitioning from fun, let's get to know you to let's get down to business. And, you know, so that's, that's what I do. That's the very first thing I do. Um, and that why question is what transitions then into the needs analysis. So then the next thing I do is um, line out expectations for how the whole appointment is going to go. This is where I really step up and take charge. Um, Vince Hall calls it setting the table. And I really liked that because it sets out and it lays out expectations of exactly what the client can expect with this appointment. So I reintroduce myself as a professional. Now, Scott and, Scott and Connor, I'm your broker. Now, your lending company doesn't do this anymore. So I'm your broker. I'm the one who's going to do the price shopping for you making sure you guys are getting the best rate. I'm going to shop it around for you. And that's going to eliminate an objection right off the bat, because at the end, you're going to get a lot of objections. Oh, we want to price shop it and blah, blah, blah. At the very beginning, before I've even talked to them about anything, I'm letting them know I'm going to price shop this for you right now. And then I tell them, I, I need to guys, ask you guys a few questions, health, legal background, financial questions, everything the insurance company needs to know anyways. Okay, this is going to help me figure out which company you qualify for. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Then we're going to make sure it fits in your budget. Okay, that's the second thing we need to do. We'll go over the numbers, make sure this fits real comfortable for you guys, because we need to make sure that monthly budget stays intact. And then at the end, what we'll do is if you qualify for it, then we'll submit the request to see if you qualify. Now, it, it's a process. I can't do anything permanent today. It usually takes, you know, three to five business days. So the most I can do is just submit it and get started for you, but it's nothing permanent. It's going to be done tonight. And then I jump into the needs analysis. So what I did was I eliminated like half of my objections right at the beginning. I'm your broker. I'm going to price shop it for you. I'm going to ask you a buttload of questions. Okay. It's everything the insurance company needs to know anyways. Because sometimes when you're asking about finances and this and that, people will be like, well, why do you need to know that? Well, it's everything the insurance company needs to know anyways. That way we figure out what you qualify for. Then we're going to run it through your budget. We're going to run the numbers and make sure this fits comfortable. So I've already eliminated the budget, you know, objection, because I already told them from the beginning, I'm going to make sure this fits in your budget. And then the think about it. That's another big objection. I just eliminated hey. think about it. Now, this is not permanent. I can't do anything permanent today. It's a process. It's going to take about a week to get you guys approved. So all we can do is just submit the request. And so you just eliminated a bunch of objections in one simple process, and then you just dive right into the needs analysis from there. Perfect. How do you go through, are you just asking the questions for the needs analysis? Or is there any additional things you're adding to it? You're going oh. through, you're getting, you're getting the, uh, the equity information. You're finding out what their monthly payment is and saying these thousand bucks a month is so about 12,000 a year, all the same stuff that Nick talks about. Connor, anything extra there? Is that kind of your same process, the way you're teeing it up and then you're going into the needs analysis? Same thing. It's been the same thing for how long now? Yep. Years. Yeah. Even when we were face to face, you guys, again, it's the same process. That's the one thing everyone forgets is it's been the same sales process for 20 years. Yeah, same thing. So all you do now, so how does the needs analysis look? Go on to the website, the virtual training platform, go to the eight steps and go to step six. It's Nick doing an appointment and you can hear how he goes through the needs analysis. That was the biggest game changer I think for Nick was he needed some process to say, he felt like he was just asking questions and make, taking notes.